Whoa, hey, whoa now, turn off them lights, them's too, too bright. Just like, like photons. Let's talk a little bit about the greatest light dragon in the game. No? Not them either. W wait, what the shit? We're talking about Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon and all his little friends. His many, many little friends. Jesus fuck, more of them than Max C. Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon is a part of the Photon archetype. And several others. Which was introduced during Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal, used by a dude named after a fucking dumbass picnic toy. Now originally the dude using them was meant to capture Ixies, and as such, GEPD here had an anti-Ixies effect. It was fucking garbage! Wow! Doesn't even activate during the fucking damage step to prevent negations, like... What the actual shit? Now, photons were originally an archetype based around having 2,000 attack in order to turbo a big boy here and mediocre all over some Ixies. Uh, but here's the problem. Uh, they, uh... They sucked. Big time. Any deck that has to go minus two to shit out a subpar boss monster and nothing else isn't gonna go very far. It didn't help when they had shit like Photon Circle. Thank you, anime. Which didn't know what the fuck it wanted to do and often pulled the deck in weird, confusing, inconsistent ways. Most of the early Photon ways had little to no relevance either in Photons or fucking anywhere else, save for Thrasher, aka ABC's Ixie's Cocksleeve, starring Bujinte Tsukiyomi. So the deck initially had the impact of a wet fart against a dragon ruler. Or Vanity's Ruler. Or Dark Ruler No More. What the fuck is with all the rulers in this game? But fast forward and eventually Galaxies came out. I guess there was a character moment or something for Kite or whatever. I don't know. I don't watch anime. I still have brain cells. Now, Galaxies did something Photons couldn't. Make the deck not suck. Granted, it wasn't tier 1 or anything, but I mean, fuck it, dude. It was still pre-Arc 5 era. Anime decks being good were rarity only seen in shit like Heroes and Black Wings. Instead of being an anti ixies deck, Galaxies decided to say, fuck it! and embrace the rank 8 spam wholeheartedly, even doing so a year before those gimmick puppet fucks came around to the OCG. Shove that limb up your ass and puppeteer yourself, gimmicks. They mostly got their stuff in the Zexalton over in the TCG, a lot of their good jams coming out in Kite's OCG-only duelist pack. Granted, there was still some anime fluff, like whatever the fuck Dimension Wanderer was and... Galaxy Dragon? How is he not an anime card? But generally the stuff was geared pretty well towards summoning the rank 8s. Granted, the pool was pretty weak at first, and we would really take some time to shine. But some fun stuff did come out, like Tachyon Brew over here. After that, things got quiet for a while, as people were tricked into thinking Arc 5 would be good. Tachyon Transmigration came out, and it was the world's craziest fucking counter trap. That was also unsearchable. But we did get a manga exclusive Number Galaxy monster, Hope Harbinger, bringer of end boards. So that was nice. Then Kite showed up in Arc 5. This is a part where things didn't go well. All of a sudden, there was this whole new archetype called Cyphers out and about. And hey, galaxies turned out pretty good when Kite switched to those, and they even helped Photons. Let's see what these guys do. Oh! Maybe there's a lot of versatility in their extra deck, though. Who did this and how do I hurt them? Cypher Dragon himself was pretty good, but a single monster seal does not an end board make. Neither does three, since I can just, you know, negate him. After that, things went quiet for a bit, except for... But once again, we did get a single super solid negate in the form of number 90. But then, like a storm drain constructed by apes against a typhoon, the dam burst. BAM! Photon support and legendary duelist 3. Wham! Galaxy support and soul fusion, aka the best Yu Gi Oh! set ever invented, doubling up so hard and extra support we think you were fucking Sidras. White Abyss gave us some great shit, primarily another great extender in Vanisher, who makes getting to our big brick easier. Photon Star Leech fucked big boy Blasty rank 4 man in order to grant some fantastic protection and shit out of Photon from hand. And Orbital in order to boost consistency. But he's an equip card. Or... Old Armor Dragon? There was also Photon Change, aka a card damned to be garbage on account of being a trap, and Photon Hand, which you just run if you want to have fun. GIVE ME THAT FUCKING MONSTER! Meanwhile, on the soul side of things, Galaxies gave us a simple summon in the form of Brave, who can slot in as an 8 or a 4 depending on what you have to work with, and can put a body on the field for night. Soul Flare, aka our easy peasy recycler that can also act as a pop if you really need it. Then there's the big lad, the mad lad, the king of cards himself, Galaxy Trance. At the cost of locking you into photons and galaxies. And reaffirming that ciphers were a mistake. Trance allows you to recover from graveyard and plus off another lad from deck, letting you make photon lord or whatever rank 8 you need. It's great, but it's... another extender. In a deck of extenders. Definitely worthwhile, though. Then there's Cleric, who's a debatable choice in the deck, and then there's Eternal Galaxy, because a rank 8 deck clearly wants to go minus to make the things it has no trouble making. Be gone, Photon Blast! You are too good for this world! No, I don't want to be Neo Galaxy Eyes! 
After that, we got Hyper Galaxy, aka Captain Situational Anime, and Eternal Bonds, which is so bad that it actually managed to counter your fucking deck. We also got Afterglow, who's coming over here in Legendary Duelist Season 2, aka Bye Blue Eyes, you fucks! And while we still do lack, you know, an actual starter, it is nice to say that we have a decent range of extenders. And our boss monsters ain't bad either. Hell, I can pretty safely say that Galaxies have one of the best extra decks in the game. Need monster negates? Photon Lord, baby. Spells going off in the grave? Oh, Parbinger. Need beatdown? Tachyon comes with a potential free hand trap too. Beard clearing? Full armor and cypher blade. And here we are today. A couple months off the TCG create a card pull where we lost to Insectors. At least we lost to something not fucking terrible. And things are calm. Or they were. Until the cardboard abortion, cardboardion? Known as Selection 10 slithered into the world, bringing with it this. Oh yes, I sure am glad that we got a brand new boss monster, not like we had enough of those. I, uh, oh, what's, what's that? That right there. You got a, uh, you got a little Cypher Soldier, is that you? Yes, a shitty non-quick effect ignition target prevention, although at least it lasts till the end of your opponent's turn. But you'll still get your shit pushed in. It's also got this bizarre thing where it can shuffle back a dead rank 9 or lower dragon in order to make it again using itself, which is just weird, especially since we have easier recycling options. But ultimately, this shows a complete gulf of understanding between Konami and what the deck actually needs. The deck doesn't need more extra deck boss monsters. The deck doesn't need more extenders. The deck, actually no deck, doesn't need situational anime garbage. What it needs is an actual starter, preferably something to save the normal summon for night. And Konami has, time and time again, refused to make this for whatever bizarre reason. Even in the good support waves, it seemed to not be aware of this issue. And given how the player base sees the archetype as bloated, even counting in ciphers, a deck which actively doesn't allow you to use galaxies or photons, it feels like getting actually helpful support will be an uphill battle. But hey, at least we're better off than a lot of other Zexel shit. You've been talking about really, bitch?